Welcome to Global Hub Updates, your daily source for global events and breaking stories. The news broke like a thunderclap across the South China Sea, shattering the morning calm and sending shockwaves through the region's capitals. The Philippine Navy had just inked a landmark deal for a new fleet of combat-ready warships, a move that would reshape the nation's maritime future. Headlines flashed urgently in Manila, Cebu and beyond, as citizens tuned in to witness history in the making. This was no ordinary procurement. It was a bold declaration of intent in a region simmering with tension and uncertainty. For years the Philippine Navy had made do with aging vessels, patching up old hulls and relying on unfulfilled modernization plans. But this time, the mood was different. There was a sense of anticipation, a collective hope that things were finally changing for the better. The words combat ready echoed with new significance, resonating in every interview and news report. This wasn't just about buying ships, it was about acquiring real capability. Missiles and launchers, torpedoes and tubes, and sailors trained to use them. Advanced sensors now scanned the horizon, giving the Navy eyes and ears it had long lacked. The days of empty platforms and under-equipped ships were finally over, replaced by vessels bristling with modern technology. The project promised not just hope, but immediate strength. No more years of waiting, no more empty promises. For Filipinos a strong navy is more than a symbol, it's a necessity for sovereignty, national pride, and economic security. The promise of new fully equipped warships offered hope, pride, and a renewed sense of unity for the nation. This was more than a military upgrade, it was a calculated geopolitical move, signaling the Philippines' intent to defend its interests. In Southeast Asia's maritime chessboard, every new asset counts, and every move is watched closely by neighbors and rivals alike. These new frigates represent a leap in the Philippines' ability to patrol, protect, and defend its vast and contested waters. The announcement sent ripples through defense circles worldwide, sparking debates and analysis in capitals far beyond Asia. Analysts began to dissect the implications for the regional balance of power, weighing what this shift could mean for future confrontations. What would this mean for the West Philippine Sea, where sovereignty and security are constantly tested? The story had just begun, but its opening chapter was already thrilling, full of promise, uncertainty, and determination. The Philippine Navy was finally stepping into a new era, ready to face the challenges of a changing world. To outsiders, the arrival of just two new frigates might not seem like a game-changer. It could look like a small step barely a ripple in the vast ocean of global naval power, but for the Philippines, this move is about quality, not just quantity. It's a deliberate leap forward, signaling a new era for the nation's maritime defense. These ships mark a dramatic shift from a fleet built on hand-me-downs to one with true combat power and modern capabilities. For decades, the Navy relied on old, lightly armed vessels, good enough for routine patrols, but never designed for real conflict or to deter serious threats. Now, these frigates are the sharp end of the spear, the most powerful surface combatants the country has ever operated, equipped with advanced sensors and weaponry. The message is clear, good enough is no longer good enough. The bar has been raised for what the Navy expects from its fleet. One fully armed frigate is worth more than five under-equipped patrol boats, offering far greater firepower, survivability, and versatility. This disciplined approach to building a modern fleet sets a new standard for all future acquisitions, emphasizing capability over sheer numbers. If this strategy succeeds, it will become the blueprint for all future modernization projects, guiding the Navy's transformation for years to come. The success of these two ships will build institutional confidence, showing that the Navy can deliver on ambitious high-stakes projects. It paves the way for steady, predictable fleet upgrades, ensuring the Navy keeps pace with regional challenges and technological advances. These hulls are more than just ships. They're the foundation of the future Philippine Navy, symbols of a new direction and national pride. The Navy is proving it can manage complex high-value defense projects, building expertise and trust for even bigger undertakings ahead. This is a turning point, a moment that signals the beginning of a stronger, more capable maritime force for the Philippines. To truly grasp the significance of the new strategy, we must first look back at the ghosts of past projects, 
remnants of ambition left unfinished and promises unfulfilled. For decades, Philippine military procurement was plagued by chronic delays, cost overruns, and systems that were never fully realized. New ships would arrive as empty platforms, designed with spaces for advanced weapons, but with those weapons missing, leaving only the shell of what could have been a formidable vessel. This piecemeal approach created logistical nightmares, with critical components stuck in warehouses and years of waiting before ships could reach their full potential. Often, funding only stretched far enough to cover the hull, while essential weapons and sensors were left to the uncertainty of future budgets and shifting priorities. The focus was too often on quick political wins, announcing new ships, holding ribbon cuttings, rather than delivering complete, combat-ready fighting units. This left the Navy with impressive-looking ships that in reality couldn't fight as intended or defend the nation's interests. Sailors were assigned to these new ships, only to find them lacking the tools and systems needed for their mission. A demoralizing and frustrating experience for those on the front lines, the capability gap persisted, even as regional security challenges grew more complex and the need for a modern navy became ever more urgent. The legacy of incomplete projects eroded confidence not just within the military, but also among the public raising doubts about the nation's defense readiness. The new frigate project rejects this flawed approach entirely, setting a new standard for how naval assets are built and delivered. It's managed with discipline, transparency, and a relentless focus on delivering a complete, integrated warship, ready for action from day one. No more shells of warships, only real, combat-ready assets that can stand up to any challenge. The mistakes of the past serve as powerful reminders of what must never be repeated, guiding every decision moving forward. Today, the Navy is determined to break the cycle and build a force that truly protects the nation's future. In response to past failures, the Philippine Navy adopted the Frigate Acquisition Project, complete philosophy, the key word, complete, no more piecemeal procurement. Now, a warship must be delivered as a fully integrated combat-ready system, ship, sensors, weapons and spares, all in one package. It's about buying capability, not just a platform. When these frigates are commissioned, they'll be ready for combat from day one. The shipyard is responsible for delivering a finished product, integrating all subsystems. This reduces risk and simplifies accountability. If something fails, there's only one contractor to call. The doctrine required a cultural shift discipline to secure full funding up front, patience to get every detail right. It's a more difficult path, but it promises far better results. The complete philosophy is more than a project name. It's a new mindset. It prioritizes readiness and aims to end the cycle of incomplete. Von Sion Kornatz in non Noxton Klee projects be likes. The Navy is finally demanding and delivering real capability. The Jose Rizal class frigates were the Navy's first modern warships, a leap forward, but not without challenges. Their acquisition highlighted the complexities of integrating advanced systems after delivery. The ships arrived with some capabilities, but key weapons and systems came later. The Navy had to work hard post-commissioning to bring them to full potential. This experience proved that true plug-and-play is a myth. Everything must be integrated from the start. The Rizal class taught planners the value of a single, comprehensive contract. These lessons shape the new complete strategy. The new project isn't a criticism of the Rizal class, it's an evolution. The Navy is building on past success, determined to do it better. The Rizal class walked so the new frigates could run, fully equipped from day one. Experience is now driving real change. The new frigates are designed for the future, not just today's threats. Future-proofing means extra space, weight, and power for upgrades, no costly refits needed, older ships were maxed out from day one, these are built for modularity, missile launchers and sensors can be swapped for newer versions, with minimal changes, this adaptability keeps the ships at the cutting edge for decades, building an extra capacity now saves money and downtime later, the integrated combat system is open architecture, not locked to one vendor. New software, sensors and weapons can be added easily. This flexibility prevents technological dead ends and vendor lock-in. The new frigates will remain relevant and formidable for their entire service life. They're not just ready for today, they're ready for whatever comes next. Smart design is a strategic asset. 
The complete strategy demands more upfront investment, ships, weapons, training, and supplies all in one budget. It's a bigger commitment but paying less for incomplete ships is a false economy. A frigate without missiles is just an expensive patrol boat. The new approach locks in funding for the entire package, ensuring no critical systems are left unfunded. This discipline prevents delays and hidden costs. It took political will to convince lawmakers and the public that a larger initial investment is wiser. The focus is on total cost of ownership, not just sticker price. Every peso spent delivers real ready capability. The strategy eliminates unpredictable delays and budget headaches. The Philippines is investing in readiness, not just hardware. The result, warships that are a source of national strength from day one. These new frigates will redefine the Philippine Navy's role. For years, the Navy focused on law enforcement and patrol, vital, but not true warfighting. Older ships could show presence but not deter or defeat modern threats. The new frigates are frontline fighters, equipped for anti-air, anti-surface, and anti-submarine warfare. This is a level of combat power the Navy has never had. The Navy can now project power and assert control over its vast maritime domain. The new ships free up others for different missions creating a balanced fleet. They enable complex multi-ship operations in strategic depth. Morale and professionalism will soar. Serving on a state-of-the-art warship is transformative. These ships will train a new generation in modern naval warfare. They're not just platforms of war, but platforms for building a confident, capable navy. As contracts are signed and steel is cut, the real test begins. Success isn't measured by ceremonies but by delivery and performance. Can the shipyard deliver on time, with all systems integrated? Once in the Philippines how quickly can the Navy train crews and achieve operational readiness? The true measure is a rapid transition from shipyard to real-world missions. If this model works, it could reform defense procurement across the armed forces. The legacy of these ships could shape the military for generations. Ultimately, success is seen on the open water, projecting power, deterring aggression, and defending national interests. These frigates are a national statement. The Philippines is reclaiming control of its destiny. The world is watching, 